Hey guys, how is everybody tonight? Hope everybody is doing wonderful. So listen, I'm not going to be long, but I wanted to talk about something because, um, of course, when um, I have different scenarios appear, I try to make sure that I provide the wisdom behind why um, that scenario appeared. So I wanted to talk this evening about boredom, okay? Um, a young girl asked me yesterday, she's a young woman, I won't call her a young girl, she's in her early 20s, and she asked me, she said, uh, do you ever get bored? And I was like, oh, baby girl, <laughs> no, 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 boredom is unhealthy. First of all, hey, Arkenny, boredom is unhealthy. Let me tell you about boredom, okay? When you have hours, time, minutes, seconds, you are awake. So I'm talking about not the, not the time of rest, I'm not talking about the time when, you know, you are um, meditating or the time you're in prayer. You're awakened hours and the times you're not at work or doing other things. Um, we should have a pursuit in our life. And I think sometimes we, we lose sight that once we become adults, that we've made it, that we've learned everything we need to know, that we have everything we need to have, that everything has been established. Even when you get the house, get the relationship, have the kids, have the cars, have the possessions, we should always continue to be inquisitive about what we are here on the planet to do. Always. So outside of this young woman asking me the question, I think it's very important that I also encourage us as adults to continue to try to seek intelligence learn read investigate yourself spend time trying to learn something new you know what I'm saying <sighs> boredom is just not in my DNA I, I don't know what that is so in order to, for me to relate to something I have to be like well I have this happen in my life all the time I'm always bored <laughs> I can't say that I'm constantly inquiring inquisitive learning trying to figure out something new what, what do I need to do now what am I supposed to be doing and I feel like once we become adults sometimes we lose this thirst this um this quest this 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 this, this thirst to learn you know what I'm saying and so when she asked me that question and being so young I was like you know right now it's vitally important that you waste no time no time Prime example, look at, if, if you guys haven't heard, you know, Tiger Woods, he's in critical condition. I mean, he's got something going on, like he, he had a very bad accident. But Tiger Woods took initiative to put every ounce of his being into his craft, into learning what to do, into helping others, into, you know, having a life of fullness. When you're not full in your life, you will find boredom to be constantly in your psyche constantly enveloping your mind your spirit your your heart and you start to get really uneasy about life depression comes a lot of times and I'm not talking about clinical depression I'm talking about just depressed because of the circumstances you're in often comes because you are not busy concerning yourself with what it is you are here to do and so boredom sneaks in because when you have hours and hours of your day where you're not doing something that is really bringing you total joy. And what I mean by total joy is I'm not talking about love relationships right now. I'm not talking about the joy of being a mom or a dad. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about for you, what inside you really gets your motor racing. 
really gets you excited about being here. Not the role you play, not the things you do, not for who you care for. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you. What is it that you want to do, that you love? What is it that you enjoy? What is it? If you are not sure what it is that gets your motor running, that gets you excited to jump out of bed, to get you excited to learn more about something, if you don't know that, you are really wasting your time and your life. Life is so precious. We cannot sit around and just act like day to day to day is coming and it will be here. We don't know about our end day. We don't know about the time is up, when our time is up. We don't, all we know is we, are, we, we were born here. That's a guarantee. We know we were born, but from the dash on to the time we leave here, we, it's up to us. So we need to focus on what is it I want to do? What am I really good at? A lot of times, and I said this before, a lot of times we will say, hey, I'm really good at that. You know, I'm really good at this. Or people will compliment you about something you're very good at. And oftentimes, until you guys seek me for a coach, you guys would downplay that gift like it doesn't matter. Somebody could tell you, you make the best peach cobbler I ever did have, honey. And the person baking that peach cobbler will tell you, oh, girl, it's nothing. It's nothing to make that. It's something. That's your gift. You're awesome at peach cobbler. You need, if you enjoy making peach cobbler and you enjoy baking and you enjoy, listen, master the crap out of peach cobbler. I'm just telling you as an example, we all were born to do something while we're here, while we're on the planet, while we have blessed, been blessed with time. We have something inside of us that only we have. There's only going to be one you. There has never been a you before now and there will never be a you again so in this time in this moment you have the opportunity to make sure that you yourself who you are will make a difference and I'm not talking about just doing something because you have to do it I'm not talking about obligatory um, things that you have to do I'm talking about what gets your motor running what makes you excited about life what makes you hungry to want to learn more, to do more, to, because if you don't take the time, honestly, take the time and say, you know what? I really, truly enjoy this and it really makes me excited to do it. And I really enjoy doing that. When you start to see that that something, whatever that something is, once you see that that something is really getting you moving, really getting you in motion, you'll start to see, I'm starting to get excited about life. You remember that all, I'm, t I'm probably bringing up something really old, but you guys remember when people used to say, get a life? Oh, you need to get a life. Get a life. It used to be a common, a common thing. Hey, Damien. Then when people would tell you, get a life. Oh my God, get a life, right? But it's true. It's vital. Whether you're a parent, whether you're a wife, whether you're a child or whether you're a single person if you don't realize the importance of really getting a life and really becoming excited about your life you're going to find out that man I should have really spent more time doing what I wanted to do don't wait till it's your deathbed and now you gotta look back on the life and all the days of boredom you let pass by you just had no pursuit of happiness, no pursuit to want to learn to do something new, to challenge yourself, to get up and do something, make a difference in somebody's life. You got to change it. I don't care what your circumstance is. You have got to sit down and say, you know what? Yes, this is my circumstance right now. But if I start tapping in, if I start going back to what I love to do, to what I'm really good at, I won't only get out of bed. I will jump out of bed. I will, matter of fact, I'll cut a lot of my sleeping time off so that I can get to what I love so much. I mean, when we're stopped, when we stopped, stop focusing so much solely on relationships or chasing relationships, chasing people to be in our life 
and we start focusing on what it is that really makes my motor run, then we start to see, ooh, my life is becoming more full. I'm starting to get more joy now. I'm starting to get more excited about life. I'm starting to get excited about life again. I'm starting to feel, you know, excited because when you lose the quest of enjoyment of life, this is how suicides happen. When people begin to see, you know, they stop being excited about living, it's easy to give up on life because there's nothing to, there's nothing challenging them that's making them see that tomorrow will be a better day or that tomorrow can be the day I do something that I could change someone's life. They don't think that far because the pattern of boredom becomes your existence. And then after you get the existence of boredom, your life begins to get depleted. And then once you're, once you're bored and you feel like there's no way that you're not ever going to have a life outside of this, be it that you are in control of your life. So only you can make the differences. But when you start to feel like there's never going to be a change, then people, they, they leave here. They take their own life. It's real. This is real shit. People will leave here because they feel like there's no hope. And so I just wanted to tap in this evening and, and tell you, like, it's not really necessarily that we cannot make a difference. You can change even if you decide, hey, I don't like my area. I don't like where I live. I don't care for, you know, my surroundings. I don't really care for my friends or, or people or family that I hang with. I'm not really cool with them like that. Then it's, it's at that point, it's time to make some real change. Sometimes you have to sacrifice. You have to cut ties. You have to make hard choices that many people don't want to talk about. A lot of people don't want to talk about the fact that, okay, if I'm tired and bored and not excited about my life, I'm going to need to make some different changes. I'm going to have to be the one to change that. We have to get out of our rut. Because I'm telling you now, being bored brings dis-ease to the body. When you don't have a thirst or excitement about life, nothing to look forward to. You just assume that today is going to be just like yesterday and the day after is going to be just like today. I'm not going to see anything else. Everything's going to be just like this. That's what, that's what you're going to continue to receive. And then your boredom becomes more a, of a pattern ongoing. You have to change it. Only you can. Only you can be the one to change it. If you're tired of something, get out. I don't care if you need to just take a trip. Do something crazy. Like people would say, tell you, oh, that's crazy to do something like that. Do it. If you feel like I just, I, I'm tired of my home. Listen, one of the people that I used to watch when, before I started to really get into my coaching practice was Tyrese. And he would talk about how you can go to hotels and sit at the bar get you an orange juice you don't have to be wealthy or get you a water with lemon and sit there and mingle with people get out of your rut go to a high class hotel and just start mingling with people that have what you desire they by you being in that energy it starts to shift you into a newfound domain in the mind see when you challenge your mind you start looking forward to something better okay i'm just trying to give you a little nugget tonight when you start to look for something different, something better, you have to do something different. Boredom comes from just feeling like there's no way out of my circumstance. I'm going to continue to be on this trend from now on. And it just causes people to give up. You have to constantly in this lifetime, always be in pursuit of happiness be in pursuit of contentment, be in pursuit of betterment for yourself. Because as you do that, as you start to trick your mind that this is just for now, this too shall pass, that changes everything. Everything changes. The Listen, one minute the, it was freezing here, now today is 40 something degrees. Do you feel what I'm saying? So everything changes, nothing remains the same. So we need to give ourselves time to 
get out of our ruts, get out of our self-sabotage and start making some radiant changes. Start thinking about what can I do today that will make my tomorrow better? If you're good at something and we all have a talent, all of us do. If you're good at something, I don't care if it's shining shoes. I don't care if it's cutting hair. I don't care if it's whatever it is, whatever your talent then what you need to start doing is taking the time, start reading, journaling, write down what you want to do, what you want to become, how you want to do it, and get really refreshed. Listen, I write my goals all the time. I have everything already written out. So at this point, I'm just working towards it. Every day I'm working a step towards being closer to achieving the goals. Just what it is. I don't just live like, oh, well, I'm a mom, that's it. No. <laughs> I have a life outside of being a parent. I have a life. Like, I'm full of life. And in order for me to be full of life, I've got to make sure that I'm constantly learning. See, where everybody gets to become adults and stuff, they get all comfortable with being an adult, but then they don't want to learn nothing else. They think they made it. Okay, then what? How are you going to improve in your life? How are you going to make a better a better life for yourself are you or or you're good with where you're at I don't know I'm always looking to improve always I'm always seeking to find how can we be better what can what what do I need to do to achieve my goals what do I need to do to make sure I have a, a clear understanding of where I'm trying to go what's my destination I mean real talk what's my destination if I'm if I'm depleting my life value because I'm being bored all the time. I'm not excited about learning anything. I have no desire to learn how to improve my life or my lifestyle or what I want to do to make certain things in a better place. Then what am I living for? <laughs> Why am I taking up space here? I need to be busy on trying to improve me, trying to help to improve other people. And in doing that, that requires for me to take some time out and do some individual learning individual search for me in pursuit of my own happiness that's vital period but again you know this isn't sexy you know what i'm saying but i'm just here to tell you real quick because i'm gonna get off of here make sure you share this video somebody is sitting in boredom right now wasting life away they don't want to do nothing they think oh this is all i have this is all i'm born to do no you make the decisions to start taking the time to write out what it is you want in your life. The dash in the middle of the date we're born and the date we die is up to us. The dash, the little bit, matter of fact, when you go to the cemetery, and I'm sure you all have been there, you can see the year of birth and the year of death, right? And the little dash in the middle. <laughs> That's what's up to you. That's what's so crazy. The big old date don't mean nothing if you're not doing anything which is more important for the dash that's in the middle of it. We have to be mindful as to what are we supposed to be doing. Am I in pursuit of learning something new? How can I improve my life? What do I need to do to make my life better? How can I improve me? Not my man, not my kids, not my friends, not my family, me. What do I need to do? How am I fulfilled? If you are tired of the rut you're in, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, only you can change it. <laughs> There's nobody else that's going to say, oh, Altavis, I get it. You know, uh, since you're so miserable, let me take all of that on for you and do it for you. That's not how this is working. <laughs> you already know you got to do the work. If you want a better, if you want a better life, you got to wake up in the morning and say, Hey, in my, in this life, I want a better life. Okay. Then what? Then what should we do? I can't just expect, I got Morgan and Braylon as my kids. I can't just expect them to make my life better or, or lay the burden down. Like, well, you know, your mom needs this and your mom needs that. Can you do this for me? That's, that's burdening my kids. Who does that? A lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people they make their misery be the be their their children's responsibility or their friends responsibility their parents responsibility no that's your responsibility it is it is your due diligence 
you have the dash to be responsible for. The year of birth and the year of date of death is not up to you. If we live right, if we don't become suicidal and take our own life, the year of birth and the year of death is not up to us. It's God's work. So, with that said, the only thing we have control over is the dash. What are we doing with the dash then? <laughs> are we working towards making sure we are becoming the better person? Are we working towards making sure we are focused on what can I do? There will never, but I'm going to put this out here one more time. There will never be another you ever again on the planet. There never was enough, there was never a you, and now there will never ever be another you, ever. Even if you got twins, each twin has their own life. Each triplet, sex couplet, whatever. They all individually have their own life purpose and plan. But it is our job individually to make sure we are trying to figure out what are we here to do on the planet. Is that making sense? Am I making sense this evening? I'm trying to get you guys to understand we get real comfortable with thinking that someone else is supposed to do the work. We got to get up and make change. We got to say, listen, I can't, <laughs> I can't live in this chaos no more. I'm tired of the burden. I'm tired of trying to, to do this and do that and nobody appreciates it. Change it. You don't have to be burdened by family. You don't have to be burdened by a woman or a man that you're in a relationship with. You can change it. You don't even have to worry about someone else trying to take over your peace. And that's one thing that when you are not bored and you're actually doing meditation and you're actually writing out your goals and doing journaling and studying and learning about your passions and what you want to do for this lifetime. When you do those types of things, you start to understand, you know what? I am excited to get up in the morning. Matter of fact, like I said, I, I, I really would call the way that I sleep in segments because I don't sleep a whole eight hours. That's too much. I'll shut it down. If I get up at three, if my body wakes me up at three in the morning, I'm up. I'm writing. I'm studying. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my, my videos for you guys to watch my works. I'm creating. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. I'm writing blogs. You guys see my blogs all the time. I post them on Facebook. That happens at usually at 3 o'clock in the morning most of the time. 3 or 4. By 10 o'clock in the morning, I've done at least 8 hours worth of work. <laughs> and I still get up and I'm still a mama. I'm still doing my... I still go to my job. I still do the other obligations. But I shut down cutting, doing all that sleeping so I can make sure that I am empowering people. It's my plan to empower. It's my purpose to empower it's my purpose to make sure that if someone is sitting in boredom in their life, that I shake them out of it. You can't live this life in boredom. There's no way. There's too much to live for. Nobody else is going to be here like you are, ever. There's only one you, ever. I mean, and, and it's, it's just real frustrating for me because I see so many people so caught up in, I want a love relationship. I want a lot of money. I want, I want, I want. But they don't want to sit down and learn and learn and invest time, sacrifice. Don't want to sacrifice nothing. <laughs> they want everything handed to them on a silver platter. Well, I, just because I want something. Well, hell, I want a lot of stuff. So I like pull up my Lamborghini. Hell, I've been waiting on that for a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, is Lamborghini just going to contact me and say, well, since you've wanted one, since you were young, a young thing, we're going to go ahead and send you, we're going to ship you a Lamborghini. That's not how this works. No, I'm not going to get a Lamborghini that way, right? As an example. So we have to sit down and be honest with self. We have to sit down and sacrifice. What am I willing to sacrifice? Ask yourself that. Start journaling that. Make that a title. What am I willing to sacrifice? Write it down. What am I willing to sacrifice? Am I willing to sacrifice an hour extra of sleep? Am I willing to get up an hour earlier than I normally would get up so that I can work on me? So I can study some things. So I can take, hey, I got courses you're, you're free to take. Uh, let me take some courses. What do I need to do to make sure that I'm focused on that? 
How, what, how can I, what books should I read? What should I learn? What, what is it that I need to be doing? Are you willing to sacrifice one hour of your day to work on yourself, to get in pursuit of your happiness? One hour? Are you willing to sacrifice that? I mean, are you willing to sacrifice one hour of your day to meditate? To, get, to shut your mind down, to be quiet, to listen to the higher power. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to sacrifice another hour? Are you willing to sacrifice your time watching movies? Take that two hours and two and a half hours you're watching a movie. Are you willing to sacrifice that time to do that? To turn around and, and get some books, sit down and study, write some things out. What's your goals? You willing to do that? That's another, uh, listen, I'm giving you your hours back. Because a lot of stuff we're doing, we're not counting the hours. We're doing it. We're doing this, we're doing that, we're going here, we're going there. And it means nothing. Because you only have the dash that you're responsible for in this lifetime. And once you sit down, <laughs> I know Alta Vista are watching me right now. Yes, but I'm educating and pouring into your mind. So this is a good watch right here. But what you have is the dash of time. That's it. That's all we're responsible for is that. So in that dash of time, are we willing to sacrifice? Can we put away our phones for a minute and start working on what? Our craft. What are you good at? We all have something. I want all of you watching me to type what you are good at. What, what has people told you that you are great at. I want to hear it. Everybody, tell me what it is you are great at. You all have a gift. Tell me. Type it up. What are you good at? I already know yours are, Kenny, but you can follow. You can go ahead and put yours in. What are you good at? Please type it up. I want to, I want to see you guys tell me what you're good at. What are you good at? Because, see, a lot of times there's been clues in our life where people will say, Oh, you are so good at that. Oh my God, you make the best, like I said earlier, you make the best peach cobbler. Oh my God, you are so dynamic. You speak so well, or you are just, people just draw to you, or I can't get enough of you. I sit here and I, I've been sitting here and talking to you for 30 minutes and I was supposed to be long gone. You are such a great conversationist. Oh my God, you have such a presence. You're a beautiful person. We know our Kenny's a great DJ. Okay, so Altavis, everything you're typing up, I want you to write that down I want you to write it I know you're typing it to me but I want you to get you a journal and write it down because there's something in the power of writing I was talking to coach Shelsey you guys know she's the one that I do the um, teachable moments live show with and I was talking to her about how when I was doing goals and setting goals and stuff and I was telling her you know when I would write it down I would have more energy towards accomplishing it. But we talked about it and energetically, when it comes from the mind to the heart, to the hand, and then the hand is writing it out on the paper, it's transformative. That's a transform, a transformation of thought to heart to hand, and it gives it life. Yes, exactly. And in that, in that trans, it, when you transmute that into that, onto that paper, let me tell you something. It can take you to so many crazy places you would never imagine. So it, yes, it gives it life. So write it down. It is a form of manifestation. Now I have done, I don't know how many videos you can go on Facebook, um, search engine. I did a whole series on manifestation. So you can at, do the little at sign and do manifestation series. I did a whole series. You can just put your feet up and watch the whole series of me talking about how to manifest. If you guys have not already joined my group, Teachable Moments, you need to get your buns over there to the Teachable Moments group. Because I'm getting ready to, Shelsey and I are getting ready to create something powerful for everybody to be a part of. Again, I'm constantly creating. I have no time for boredom. I have to make sure I'm creating. Now, Altavis, because you spoke of what you are good at, I want you, like I said, I want you to write it down, write down what it is that you're good at. And then 
I want you to go back. Think about this. This is very important. I want you to go back to your childhood, Altavis, and think about what you enjoyed the most when you were little. Go back to the playground. Go back to when you were at home and you were a little girl. What did you love the most in your childhood? What made you so excited when it was time to go to that particular class in school or if you loved mute, whatever it was you loved, write it down. There's a reason why I'm having you guys write this stuff down because of course, I'm taking you back. See, when we become adults, we oftentimes lose our childhood self. We lose what we loved when we were young. And when we lose that connection to our self, our younger self, then we start to focus on everything outside of ourselves because we're starting to deplete and lose what we love so much inside. So a lot of times people hungry for relationships or hungry for friendships or hungry for social life or hungry for family or hungry because they want a kid. All of those things come from wanting something outside of yourself because you're not fulfilled inside. That makes sense? So a lot of people that claim that they want sex or want love affairs and all this stuff, it has nothing to do with the fact they really want that. It's just that inside, something isn't getting filled up inside. So they're feeling uncomfortable and they're like, oh, I want to get, I want to get something and I can't get it from this man or I can't get it from this woman or I can't get it from my kids. My kids really have me frustrated and angry or I can't get it from my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers. And that comes from the lack within. Now, Altavis, also I have a course called Awaken Your Gifts. I'll inbox you that link. You can take that. Um, and listen. It is so much stuff that I have. It's ridiculous. But I do have a course you could take called Awaken Your Gifts. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Damien and our Kenny both took the course. I, I'm pretty sure both of them took it. But listen, <laughs> it is a powerful thing when you start to recharge and revisit self. A lot of times we're so sad and depressed and bored because we've we've lost being inquisitive about what moves our motor you know um when you don't use something we'll just say as as examples when you don't use um i don't know what what, do, what what don't we use anymore when we were little uh we used to jump rope right if we went and found our old jump rope <laughs> Or, or our Jack, remember Jacks? Remember Jacks? You bounce the ball and Jacks, you pick them up. Oh, that used to be the fun stuff. Remember the uh, te tether ball and all? We had so much fun when we were little. But when you no longer use those things, they're full of dust. They're not even in working condition a lot of times anymore. That's the same thing that happens to your soul. So when you're not using what you're well at gifted with, that God's gifted you with, you're not doing anything with it. You begin to get bored because you're you're just you're you're stagnant. You're not feeling excited about life. And it's because you're like, man, I don't know. I just feel like my life in comparison to somebody we maybe admire or wish we had a life like them, because we're not we're not filled here. So that is why so many people get so frustrated by, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, I want this, I want that. But it all starts with you first. See, our Kenny took the yeah, okay, our Kenny took the course, and so I'm thinking Damien took it too. But when you start to pay attention to the things that the little things, the little things mean so much. When you go back to your childhood, go back to the playground, Altavis. Go back to going back to Grandma's house, and what what did you love when you were there? What did everybody tell you as a kid you were good at? Because there's always something. Grandma or aunts and uncles, they always were big about, oh, look at, look, look at little Altavis girl. She is so good at such and such. Whatever they said you were good at, write it down. Because that was, that was, if you think about it, when we were little, we were closer in time to what we were born to do than we are now. Because of obligations, because of you know, roles and, and, and jobs and all this stuff, money matters and everything else, it begins to 
cause us to get amnesia as to what it was we were good at when we were little. And it's like, well, dang, I, didn't, I forgot about that. Well, yeah, you forget about it because, of course... We're big, we're big about everything else. What else can I do to do this? Or what else can I do to do that? But once you get to the point that you're like, you know what? I did love this. I remember, just go back. Go back to your grandma's house. Go back to your, to your old, old memories. And just revisit you. When you do this, I have, I have like all of the people that I coach, I have all of my clients do this and they find out so much about themselves that they forgot because there was a lot of things we forgot that we love to do because we, we get busy on life becoming a woman and becoming an adult and we got, now we're a mother or wife or whatever. It, in, it ends up taking precedence over what you were born to do. We get these obligations coming in and, and it's usually, it usually cuts off the life we had that maybe we could have been fulfilling at the time, but it's never too late. <laughs> I didn't get my purpose until I was like 35 and I, I laugh about it now because my dad said, yeah, you were boy crazy. Like, he ain't lying. I did a lot of boys. Oh, loved it. <laughs> and I, listen, I still love handsome men. They changed. I'm still the same me now. Let me get this. Let me get that clear. But what's true about the, the, the craziness is that when you start to sit down and you're like, you know what, damn it? I was really good at some stuff. I kind of set it to the side because I had stuff going on that, of course, you know, obligations come, bills come, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. And so that's when we have to shut it down and say, okay, you know what? I'm getting back to me. <laughs> I'm getting back to me. I'm going to start getting excited about being me. And what happens is you, you start to get so overwhelmed at basically recovering time that you wasted. So now you're on a high. Because, you know, when I, when I found my purpose at 35, I went on overdrive. I mean, I'm, I mean, on overdrive. I just, I couldn't sleep. I was focused. I was moving. I mean, my grind was crazy, crazy. Like I had no time to stop and I did not, I sacrificed so much without, you know, tampering or, or, or tapering off my parenting. I still was focused on getting this grind in. I got to get this done. You know, okay. You know, time is of the essence. So it just empowered me to get busy, real busy, sacrificing a lot of sleep sacrifice writing doing my poetry then i was doing a radio show then i was out here doing a web series then i was doing you know i was doing a lot of stuff I, matter of fact i created two or three plays i was like and i still have that stuff to this day alta vista stuff is still sitting here i got like three or four courses still sitting here hard copy courses still sitting here I mean, so again, I was on, on the grind, on the grit to get what I need to get done. But of course you realize, and, and I was a late bloomer also. Don't, don't beat yourself up because I feel like this It's never too late. Never too late. It's not necessarily a late bloomer. It's just when you think about it, it was the path to which you were working on your life at the time. Like I said, boy craziness you know what i'm saying cut off me being trying to figure out anything but what this one has and how he cute he is and oh my goodness changed everything you see what i'm saying so um it's just vital it's just vital again that's why i said um hold on a second um it's very important that we sit down and we really focus on making sure that we have everything we need that we have everything we need and we realize that outside of everything else we have the power to create some powerful things trust me you know uh, uh yeah so again as soon as we start to really pay attention to how much we have um we will understand quickly that Life is always going to be what we make it, you know, um, 
but we also become empowered when we begin to do what we want to do. When, when we begin to do not only what we want to do, but we begin to do what we're born to do, listen, honey, <laughs> it changes everything. We start to get so excited about just being happy about life. You can't, you, I, you can't sleep long. Like for me, I don't sleep long because I'm like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to, oh, I got to do this. And it's a fulfilling life. So no matter what relationships I have, female, friendships, um, if I have parental relations, you know, like being a parent, being a daughter, being a mom, all of those um, roles that I have is fun, joyful, fulfilling. Yes, but there ain't nothing like my passion for getting up in the morning and doing what I need to do and making sure I create for everybody to feed off of what I'm born to gift to all of you. I'm gifted to give this stuff to you. I meditate for a long time to make sure that I get the curriculum to provide you guys with what you need to learn. I was, like I said, I'm out here shopping, getting groceries and stuff. And the, the spirit said, sit down, turn your car on. I know you in a rush to get to Sam's Club. But sit down, you need to reach out. These people need you to talk about boredom. Did I sacrifice for you? Yes. <laughs> That's what I do is I have to do that. But it's 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 my it's a part of my purpose. But if I don't meditate, I can't hear what the spirit is telling me to do. Because I'm so busy, 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 busy. I don't shut my mind down to hear. This is why meditation, journaling taking time to learn something outside of what you already know is key and so important because when you start to study you're like oh your mind starts to open up open up when you start doing what you're born to do like you said well i'm good at i'm good at encouraging people turn on your camera girl and start encouraging that's it's free <laughs> it's free to do that it doesn't cost anything I mean, and so when you start writing out what you want to do, what you want to create, how you want to live, what you want your life to look like, what do you, you have to, when you want to write down what it is you want, you want to write specifics down. Be specific. God, I want this. When you write it, remember heart, I'm, I'm sorry, mind to heart to hand, write it out and then put it away. And then be intentional. I will every day when I get up do a step towards making that become what I want. There's a lot of people that want stuff. I'm just saying. A lot of people want stuff, but not a lot of people are doing stuff to make it happen. <laughs> I'm just keeping it a real listen. There's a lot of people wanting stuff. But there's a lot less people wanting to get up and sacrifice. How many people you know get up at 3 in the morning to write, to, to help out other people that I may not even know who I'm helping? Sometimes I know, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have no idea if I'm helping somebody or not. I don't know. I just write. Type. Get it done. God says write about this. Like, all right. He had me do a whole series, video, video, what you call a vlog. He had me do a whole vlog series on being alone. Do you know how much I fought against that? Nobody's going to listen to this. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to watch a alone series. Nobody's going to want that. Who's going to watch me? Who? The spirit said, do it. Man. All right. I don't agree with this at all, but all right. So I did the alone series did fairly well but again it's still here if people need if people are struggling with being alone hashtag and do the at sign in the in the search in the search uh facebook search and what and just type alone series no spaces and you can find out whatever it is you want to find out listen i'm telling you when everybody else is asleep between the hours of 3 a.m and 5 a.m is what you call monk hours. 
monks are up between the hours of 3 to 5 a.m. And so um, these hours are for light workers or people helping the planet to be up, to focus, to be in tune with the spirit so we can hear what is, what's the need of the people. And when we understand that, we're like, okay, so what do I need? What do you want me to write? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? That's how I get it. Three in the morning. Get up. Sometimes I'm, I'm in a good sleep too. Sometimes, woo, in a good old sleep. Wake up. I'll look at the clock. 3.15. Like, are you serious? <laughs> I don't even chart time no more. I'm like, all right, I'm supposed to be up. So what am I writing? What am I doing this morning? What is it? What do you want me to write about today? All right, let me get busy. So then I do it. But if I didn't, if I wasn't really sitting and being mindful of what I need to do in my purpose, and I really wasn't in pursuit of even learning anything about it, I wouldn't be able to give you guys what y'all need, man. And this is what I'm big about. I want to make sure that everybody that I have contact with, whether it's through you guys passing on the videos or people that just happen to come on to the lives when I go live, even if it's one person, I don't care. I don't care. It's not about that. It's not about the amount of people. It's about who gets impacted. Who's going to get off of this video tonight and say, you know what? I'm going to write. I'm going to, I'm going to, let me go to Walmart one in the morning. Go to Walmart and get me a journal. <laughs> Listen, I'm just telling you stuff like this is what really helps. This week it's one o'clock in the morning. And you're like, you know, I could be calling such and such. And get my groove on. But I think I'm going to go to Walmart and get me a journal. That's what I think I'm going to do tonight. I'm not going to call him. Even though I want to. And I like to have a little fun with him. But I'm going to go ahead and get me this journal. And get to writing. That's a sacrifice. I mean. What better gift can you give a, fa a fabulous man. When you are looking at working on you. Because now he's going to have a better you. Tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I just, you know, I just try to keep it a buck. Listen, this is the way to do it. I know it sounds crazy, but hey, whatever you doing at one, you booty calling or whatever you doing, or you trying to get on that porn hub, or ooh, I can, you know, I can call such and such, and you can go over to the club or whatever it is you can do at one in the morning. Take your behinds on over to Walmart and get y'all a journal and start writing out what you want for your life. We don't have time to play around. It is, it is down to crunch time. When I tell you, it just really had me moved to hear that Tiger Woods was in this condition. That his, that he is, he had this bad accident. But the, but the problem is, He's somebody that was doing the work. He's somebody that spent countless hours working on himself. Doing what he loved to do. He led by example. So outside of that, yes, he's in a tragic situation right now. But his life was full. He was just a go he was just golfing yesterday. With uh with Dwayne Wade. And it's like, well, my God, this man was full of life. He was always doing what he loved to do. In the accident, his golf clubs was in there. In his purpose. He knew what he was born to do. So when you have a full life like that, and something tragic like this happens, you're like, man, he was on the grind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't know when time is up or something happens to where it shatters your momentum. I've had a lot of things I was working on. Let me tell you something. A lot of plans, a lot of things I was working on. I had a real good momentum, had people that was supporting me and doing this and doing that and going here and going there. And coronavirus happened or something else happened. And then you're like, man, how does all this happen? Well, sometimes life happens. But one thing that didn't happen was I didn't stop moving because of, because of disadvantages or because of U-turns that happened in what I was trying to get done. I just kept it moving. I'm not going to stop. I can't stop. I'm dedicated. I'm dedicated to making sure that my purpose is fulfilled. 
period. I just can't. I can't. I have to be able to get this off. If I don't, then I'm going to feel like, man, I could have done more or man, I could have done this or, you know, listen, like I told you guys before, I don't care if it's one person, 50 people, a thousand people, however many people are on here is not my issue. Whoever's on here is supposed to be here <laughs> because obviously the message is for them. Boredom, if that is in your life, if you found out that you are not going to live after today and your life has been 50% full of boredom, you're going to have a, a, a sad look back and what you call regret. <laughs> but when you sit down and you're like, oh no, I, whew, if I leave today, I don't, I don't put the work in. I done put the work in. Even even in my even in my late blooming, I done put the work in. I am okay. I'm good. I done put the work in. I I I went over and above because I realized all those days and nights and stuff I was concerned about all stuff that didn't mean shit. I started to say, Ooh, let me woo. A very close friend of mine started showing me all his works he was doing and doing this and doing that had a whole family and wife and kids and i'm looking at him and he showed me his works i said oh i got to get busy he said what do you mean i was like uh i have no excuse after i seen your work your portfolio of what you done done oh i got to get busy he motivated me some people would be jealous of it or some people would be like i just don't have it in me i can't do that Man, he lit a fire under my ass. You hear me? And then my kids. I'm like, ooh, my kids. They they lit a fire under me. But I'll tell you what blew a torch under my ass was my grandson. I said, oh, shit, I got a second generation out here. I can't fucking sleep. I got a whole grandson. Oh, oh, it, 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 it really changed. I, I was already in pursuit of generational wealth and making sure that my family is good but after my grandson showed up oh no it's a whole nother level now oh no <laughs> oh, i was sleeping a couple hours now i'm sleeping one hour you feel what i'm saying like oh i can't do this i have to make sure that i'm doing what is what is necessary i have a whole grandson out here i gotta make sure i'm busy but busy in pursuit of of healing lives making sure people are 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 getting something from what I'm saying so as I'm pouring into your spirit and pouring into your life I don't care if it's just if you take one course or all nine of them it is totally your call but when you take these damn courses and you apply what I've given you I'm telling you right now your life's gonna change period point blank your life will change for the better trust me I'm just telling you now, you take courses, man, you sit down and you start right now. And the funny thing about it is I take courses. I, I take courses. I take courses for different things, all kinds of things. I'm like, oh, I'm always going to be a student. Yes, I'm y'all's coach, but I'm always going to be a student. What good am I if I'm not learning nothing? How am I claiming to be a coach and I'm not doing the work myself? I'm not getting up. I'm not sacrificing nothing. I'm like, man, I don't even watch TV. My daughter has been telling me for a week or maybe two, there's two movies she wants me to watch. And I have yet to get on HBO. She said, Mom, you got to get on this movie. And da -da -da. I said, girl, do you know I have a whole grandson that you brought in the world? I don't have time to watch movies. But mom, it's really good. I said, girl, you ain't going to wear me thin, child, for to watching this movie and stuff. But... If she wants to watch it with me, then we can sit down and watch a movie. But outside of that, I got to be on the grind. I've got to study. I got to learn certain things. I got to know what, where's the need at? What do y'all need? You know what I'm saying? I can't just be out here talking and y'all don't really, y'all don't, I don't really know what you guys are in need of. So that's why I said, like I said, go over to my group um, and request to be on there. It's called Teachable Moments. Because we're going to have so much stuff going on. Um, there's going to be announcements made in March. So you guys can be a part of that. Um, 
but yeah so let me get into sam's before i miss out on what i need to go in here to get but make sure you guys share this video um i love all of you i'm so glad and thankful for you guys i always appreciate those of you that stick with me and listen and heed what i'm telling you because i'm not going to steer you wrong if i'm telling you something trust me it's vitally important all we have is the dash that's it the dash and in that dash can be some powerful shit we can accomplish in this lifetime trust me <laughs> i'm trying to tell you it is so important it is so important so make sure you guys share this video guys i love all of you make sure you do as i asked if you guys have not tried that exercise that i said to go back to your childhood and just remember what you loved so much about your childhood. Even inbox me. You know, I'm always an inbox away. I love hearing you guys' stories. Tell me what it is that you loved when you were young. What were you good at? What brought you the most inner joy? You know, um, it's funny because I can think back when I was little. I, I, I loved talking. And, and as you see, that hasn't changed. <laughs> so again, we have gifts that we're born with. And... Again, we, we usually fall a little short because we really don't realize the power of our gifts until we start to really take the time to learn, well, what, what, what is this gift for? You know, my gift of communicating helps me to be able to provide you guys wisdom and provide you guys with thoughts that can help you to recharge your life. And that's what's important to me, if that makes sense. So I'm out of here, guys. I love everybody. Please make sure that you share this video. Um... And join my group, Teachable Moments, with uh, Coach Shelsley and myself. All right? And then I'll put the courses in here. If you guys want to, you guys can share the courses if you have the links. Or if you want, I'll, I'll post them up for you guys so you can you can go over there and take a look at them. There's, there's plenty. There's a, I think I have, like, like I said, nine courses over there you can take a gander at if you'd like. <laughs> so I'm out of here, guys. I hope you have a good evening. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Good night.